because action is everything. But if you're, you know, negating action with the absolute of failure, which is the false story that we tell ourselves, you're not even giving yourself the ability to act, you know? So yeah. that inner monologue people struggle with most, they have created glass ceilings on their potential. And when I say potential, I do not mean potential to be a seven figure earner or a potential to be famous on Instagram or a potential to be the next like guru. I mean, potential to experience quality of life. A lot of times people tell themselves I'm as good as this and I'll never be better than this. And that's what this is. This is who I am. I hate that phrase so much. Yeah. This is not who you are. This is who you have been in the past and who you're choosing to be currently. Who you have been is not who you currently are. It doesn't have to be. You don't have to become a carbon copy of your past. It's an active choice. Whether you feel it is or not, I'm sorry, but it is. Hey, quick shout out to our primary sponsor for this episode. It is Peter Harrett. He's the author of The Rings of Hesseron, and here's an excerpt from his book. Check it out. The steadily intensifying rumble echoed through the river valley. Pierce stared in that direction, but the sound offered not a single clue to its source or the cause. Lauren, his wife, and their three children joined him on the high bank, all searching the murky sky as one. A mixture of wonder and dread of the unknown filled their hearts. As it neared the ground, the sound grew exponentially, roaring, snapping, popping, and shaking the bones of the small group of onlookers. Then the low-hanging clouds started glowing, radiating yellow light on the snow-covered grasslands. To the family, it seemed as if the sun was falling to earth. They watched in horror as a fireball broke through the glowing clouds and streaked to the ground. As it struck, the object threw up a frightening plume of earth and snow, followed by a deafening boom. The concussion wave that followed sent them reeling. Their world shook violently, and snow fell from the trees around them as they struggled for balance. Chris, you're a keynote speaker, power up your entrepreneur, model coach. You're also on Titan Games Season 1, and you're the author of this awesome book, The Upper Hand. It comes out in May there, but you can pre-buy it now. Thank you so much, man, for taking time, and congratulations on the new book, man. Absolutely. I appreciate you having me back on, and I'm excited to talk about all this stuff. So, Yeah, dude. I mean, we spoke. It was a while back, October of 2019. It's so good to catch up with you. Uh, but for those who don't know your story, I mean, you're an absolute world changer now, but it wasn't always that way. Like, take us back a bit, like... What was life like for you before you became the Chris that you are today? Man, I just, uh, having a you know physical disability and having type 1 diabetes, um, I was that guy in the room you didn't really notice. And if you did notice, you noticed for the wrong reason. You know, at least that's yeah. how I felt. I always yeah. felt like the way I was born and the, the struggles that I had kind of made me separate from society. You know, uh, I make a joke. I feel like a one-handed guy living in a two-handed world. But I, I truly did, you know, feel so different because I was different physically. Uh, but it took me a long time to realize that everyone's different, you know, from facial features to skin complexity to socioeconomic. There's so many differing factors, and that's why we're individuals. But when you are outside of the societal norm, you know, it's easier to have labels slapped on you like broken or useless or any of these, you know, things that kind of are synonymous with the way we think about disability. You don't think about disability and you don't think power, you don't think success, you don't think uh, sexy, you know, you don't, you don't think any of these things when you hear disability. Yep. Most people think, oh, I'm sorry, but why are we, why, why we're sorry for something that you don't even know is bad? It's different, doesn't mean it's bad. So it took me a long time to go from broken to, you know, successful turning my health issues into wealth issues, so to speak. And yeah. uh, now I'm just fortunate to be at the point both from a business perspective, but more so from a quality of life perspective that uh, I am who I am, regardless of what I have or don't have. Yeah. And then, I mean, when, cause you just like revealed kind of, you took your glove off just in the last few years, right? I mean, when you, you did last that, three years, yeah. What was it that triggered you to kind of say, all right, I'm taking the glove off. And, and it, what did you feel emotionally in that moment? Uh, man, I mean, you, Four years ago, five years ago, if you'd have told me I was going to take the glove off, I would have said no, no fucking way. Like that's not gonna, yeah. like yeah. it's just not gonna happen. 
I was so overly confident in never taking the glove off because I had it on for 17 years. You know, I, wow. I decided that who I was, was the kid with the glove, the guy with the glove. I was going to be the geriatric with the glove. You know, I was going to live, I, I entangled the vision of my life with the way I hid my disability. Hmm. And that's how I just, I thought that was okay. And I, I set myself up some obstacles that if I accomplished these obstacles, then I would show my hand almost as a way to deter myself, you know, if I got a prosthetic arm, if I, you know, it's almost impossible to get, you know, these prosthetic arms just because insurance and it's a nightmare. And eight months later, six months later, I ended up getting approved for a prosthetic arm. So like, I can't go back on my word. One of the best ways to jump in the deep end for me has been social media. So I was like, I'm just going to make a little video. I'm going to post it online and see what people think. And that went absolutely viral, uh, reached millions of people. Washington Post covered it, ended up getting on a TV show with The Rock, going to Uganda, speaking about diabetes. Um, and that was probably the best, most uncomfortable situation I've ever been in. Sure. I love one of the things you talk about on your website that really hits home for me is goals versus actions when it comes to productivity, man. What does that mean for you? I mean, it, it's super, the, one of the most fun things to do, you know, people love drinking, people love eating and people love writing goals. Yeah. And uh, all three of those things can be fun, but it doesn't mean they're getting you towards the life you want. People love to write down those goals and they'll do it a hundred times. They'll have a hundred different note sections or loose sheets of paper or a whiteboard that hasn't been touched in years. And they love writing goals because goals are so much fun to write about. It's fantasy. It's like yeah. watching a movie, you know? You don't have to do anything at the movies. You just watch it. You enjoy it. You get that feeling of like excitement without the feeling of fear. You know, mm -hmm. you don't have the responsibility to make it happen. You just enjoy. It's almost like a drug. Writing goals is like a drug. Yeah, it is. And people take that drug all the time because they watch Gary Vee. They watch Andy Priscilla. They watch these gurus and tycoons and they're like, man, that is so good. I want to write down goals. You go write those goals down and then they never get to them. You know, like I find that a lot of unhappiness comes from making promises to ourselves that we aren't willing to keep. Yes. Part of us knows we're not willing to keep some of those goals and promises. We do. We know when we write them, we're like, I've written this goal 500 times. I have no action plan. I have no desire to actually do it. So maybe that shouldn't be on your goal list right now, you know? I've had to learn the process of writing down like a stream of consciousness, everything I ever want to accomplish. You're allowed to do that, you know, but then I'm real with myself. I'm like, which one of these are priority? Which one of these are the most priority? And which one of these can I accomplish in the next day, week or month? You know, we tend to think too, too, uh, too long in the sense of the entire marathon when you haven't even begun training. We're so focused on what that picture is going to look like at the finish line that we never establish the training philosophies or patterns to ever get there. So we, there's this disconnect between what we think we want versus what we're willing to actually do to get there. And that's what I talk about when it talks about goals versus, versus actions. Oh man, it's so good. Dude. I was getting chills on my neck, man. That was awesome. It's true though. Like there's, there's so that kind of like weird, weird story I tell, especially kids to make them really realize I'm like, you know, five birds are on a wire four decide to leave. How many birds are left? Well, five, because just because they made the decision doesn't mean they actually committed to it. Yep, exactly. Commitment to a decision is much better than deciding you want to do it eventually. And that's what goals tend to be. So I'm not saying writing goals is bad whatsoever. Honestly, it's fun. I still do it. Yeah. But understand the novelty in writing the goal versus the struggle and actually getting it done. Yes, absolutely, man. That's so good. And that kind of like, it leads into the next question like about your book because it just came out here or it's coming out in May, but people can go and buy it right now in April. And yeah. it's called the Upper Hand, Leveraging Limitations to Turn Adversity into Advantage. And you say in this book that it's not supposed to like put someone in a winning position over another person. It's to yeah. give them the upper hand over themselves. And that is so powerful, man. And this book's only 120 pages, I think. And, and it just yeah. looks like it's going to be an awesome book, man. Can you deep dive into this book? And who's this book for? I can't, I wish I had the book to show you. I just don't know. Yeah. yeah <laughs> so yeah. the upper hand uh, <laughs> is <laughs> the upper hand. It's a, two years plus of like beating myself up, you know, right. and it has very little to do with my story and a lot more to do with 
uh, how we self-sabotage, you know, like the self-communication. We Everyone talks about communication is key, but we always skip that first part of like self-communication is key. And I don't mean that in a like yoga sense where you're meditating. I truly mean that in like, if you haven't worked out the stuff in between your worst critic and like your best self, like you're never going to be able to get anywhere. Because if you constantly sabotage yourself before you even start, all you're going to do is write goals. All you're going to do is tell yourself a story where you're predicting your loss and in a position where you're both the narrator and the actor, you know, you're both the director and the actor. There's a war between what you say about yourself and what you do. And that's, that's what I talk about. Getting the upper hand over anyone else is very easy because it's literally manipulation. It's manipulation. It's understanding that you don't have to do anything. That's why we love to help other people with their problems, even if they're just like ours. We know exactly what to say to someone else to help them because that removes responsibility of us ever having to do anything. It's so much easier to point fingers than it is to do something. So in this book, it's all about you getting the upper hand over those thoughts that predict your own demise, over those situations where we tell ourselves, you know, if I don't win, I'm going to suck versus the reality of if I don't win, I lose. And if I don't lose, maybe I win. And there's no more emotion to that story than what I just said. Yeah. Oh, man. Now, I mean, I'm sure you hear stories of fans and followers all the time. What is it that biggest struggle that you see people struggling with the most in their lives? I think it's the inner monologue. Mm -hmm. I think the biggest struggle people have is their inner monologue and listening to every thought. And I mean that on both spectrums. A thought is a random occurrence a lot of times, you know, whether it's good, bad, whatever you see, good or bad, we'll use ineffective and effective. We tell ourselves there's no way I could ever accomplish it. That's just a thought. We tell ourselves I'm definitely going to accomplish this. That's also just a thought. They have no weight except for the weight that we give them. And often we don't practice giving thoughts weight. We just do without thinking. You know, it's so crazy how we're willing to invest in certain thoughts and not others when we have an equal opportunity to do both. So in a position where you're predicting your own failure, I would ask, is that helping you or hurting you? When you look back, you know, four months from now, four years from now, are you going to be proud of that decision to destroy your potential? Or are you going to wish that you talk to yourself differently? Are you going to wish that you put yourself in a better position foundationally to make better moves? Because action is everything. But if you're, you know, negating action with the absolute of failure, which is the false story that we tell ourselves, you're not even giving yourself the ability to act, you know? So yeah. that inner monologue people struggle with most, they have created glass ceilings on their potential. And when I say potential, I do not mean potential to be a seven figure earner or a potential to be famous on Instagram or a potential to be the next like guru. I mean, potential to experience quality of life. A lot of times people tell themselves, I'm as good as this and I'll never be better than this. And that's what this is. This is who I am. I hate that phrase so much. Yeah. This is not who you are. This is who you have been in the past and who you're choosing to be currently. Who you have been is not who you currently are. It doesn't have to be. You don't have to become a carbon copy of your past. It's an active choice. Whether you feel it is or not, I'm sorry, but it is. So my whole job is to reframe people's perspectives so that they do the right thing. It's so good too. Cause I, I mean, I come from this broken home. I come from the, the craziness, you know, jailed at 18, bankrupt to 21 drug addiction, uh, alcohol addiction, you know, craziness. And that's one of the things that I really talk about people is like, man, our past does not define our future and we can change it at any moment, man. And that is so good, dude. So good, man. One of the things I wanted to congratulate you on though, is like, you've been killing it in the gym, dude. I've been watching your progress. I've been trying, man. Bro. I've been trying. You squat over 600 pounds, you bench 350, you deadlift 675, man. It's incredible, dude. Like, and then you have your first physique competition coming up here uh, in just a few days, right? Yeah, I'm about five days out. So, uh, oh man, cranky, cranky. <laughs> oh, so, I was going to say, like, what's that journey been like for you, man? And, and, and what are you excited most about this first competition? Uh, so what's crazy about that is when people like say, oh, how's the process been? Like, how long have you been prepping? You know, the usual answer is 12 weeks, 14 weeks, 16 weeks, you know, uh, for me, I say 11 years and they're like, excuse me, right. you know, 11 years ago, I made a decision that I was going to bodybuild. I was tiny. I was that kid you made fun of in school for having a bird chest. You know, 
I was that kid who, if I even showed up to a football practice, they would be like, male cheerleader, or what are you doing? <laughs> you know, I was never gifted. It's so funny because people tell me now, oh man, you're so lucky, you're so gifted, you're so talented. And I'm just like, dude, I have a prosthetic arm. I'm disabled. I was born to a poor family. I have an autoimmune disease that eventually could kill me, you know, but I'm lucky. I love how people see the tip of the iceberg, the 11 years of work and say, you're so, you're just genetically gifted. Like, no, dude, I, I just quit last. Where you thought it was a 12 week prep. I've been doing this for 11 years. I've told myself for 11 years, I was not good enough. And this weekend I will be good enough. It's been a long process for me. I could have been ready sooner, but I wasn't. And I didn't get hung up on that. I didn't get hung up on the failures or the mistakes or the road bumps or the decisions not to do it. I just eventually did it, you know? And we can talk about timelines, all that. But for me, the most proud is gonna, I know that when I go on stage, I'm gonna be proud of myself, the package that I'm bringing and that potential hope that the person who thought they would never be able to make it because of their circumstance might be offered a different perspective. Man, I'm excited for you, dude. So proud of you, man. That's awesome. I love the journey, man. A lot of people, like like you said, man, oh, you're lucky. You're just gifted, right? I mean, it's just nutty that people don't, they don't see the hard work that gets put into it before the success, right? I mean, the hard work is not sexy. Yeah. That's not, I don't want, like so many people, movies, society has kind of ruined that, you know, but we, we want to see the success. We want to see that finish line moment. That's like the the feel good moment. We never want to see the mid race moment where they're slowing down. Yeah. That's not sexy to people because that's not what we want to see. We only, we idolize the result and not the process. And that's why we get in trouble. And that's why people don't do things. Right. Man. Uh, you know, one of the things that I, I noticed on your Instagram that's new, I think since you and I last spoke is you're the co-founder of energy bite protein snack bars. These things look awesome, dude. how did all that come yeah. together, man? And how's that going? Oh. <laughs> So when people talk about, you know, luck, uh, I'm more of a believer in like fortune, you know, when operate, when opportunity meets preparation. Yeah. Um, I had learned marketing, you know, on my own to build my own speaking business. And I've been a one man art, you know, and uh, I met a dude at a speaking event who was a chef and he's like, Hey man, I have these bars. I'm also type one diabetic. Uh, I'd love for you to try them. I tried them, gave him some advice. He's like, bro, you really know your stuff. I'm like, I have a degree in exercise science, but I guess I know marketing too. He's like, I'd love to hire you as a consultant. Did that, started turning the company around. Um, he's like, bro, I wanna bring you on full time. I want you to be the marketing director. I'm like, cool, why not? Did that. He's like, dude, I can't afford you. Uh, you have too much to do. I wanna rebrand this entire company. I want you to take that over and I'm gonna make you co-founder of the rebranded company. So within a year and a half, two years, I went from not knowing about a company to owning it. And I didn't create the company. It's not the sexy, like I started this from scratch. No, I took something that wasn't really working and I've made it work now. We've grown 3000% since last year in the hardest pandemic. And we offer a bar that doesn't sacrifice taste for health. It's actually delicious. I literally can't have them in my house because I'm prepping and I'll eat the whole damn box. Um, and it's made by a chef. So that the concept is incredible. We're gonna grow to a high level, but it's been so exciting to take something from the very beginning and change it so that it serves a customer even better. Yeah. Man, you have so much awesome stuff happening for you this year. You got the book, you got your first physique competition, you're obviously powerlifting, man, and you've got energy, uh, protein bars coming up or snack bites there. Like outside of that, it, what are you most excited about? Or maybe it's the combination of? I think it's the, the combination of, I think what I'm most excited for is I might have even said this. This would be dope if I said this on our, our last uh, podcast years ago. It's about planting seeds. I'm finally growing those seeds that were planted years ago. And to watch that barren field start to flourish, it shows me that like all of the seeds that never grew, all of the times that I was told like, it's not gonna work, all of the times that I told myself, like, dude, just stop, clearly there's nothing. I waited it out and I just kept going. And to see that come to life is the most exciting thing in the world, you know? The book has been a huge goal of mine, the physique thing, huge gold mine. I'm knocking off things that I thought were lifetime goals. And now I'm almost like, man, I should probably start planting some new seeds because these seeds are growing. I'm like, what do I do now? You know, yeah. but it's not to pat myself on the back. It's more to show everyone that 
you got to wait it out. And when I mean wait, not docile and dormant, but like when you plant seeds, don't obsess over the seeds that you plant. Keep going, keep planting more seeds because I promise you, if you plant a hundred, it's not enough. You know, you just keep planting, revisit the things you need to revisit, but keep going. Like it, not just keep going in the sense of keep running, but make sure you're assessing where you are right now. And is this the life you continue to want? Enjoy the progress, the process, stop chasing happiness, stop chasing end result things and chase growth, chase progress, chase things that grow you instead of just have this one sided life of like good, you know, you can't have good without bad. you can't have success without failure, you can't have you need opposition to, to appreciate what you want. So when you do hurt when you do fail when things do happen take that feel that you're allowed to feel like crap about it that it happens but also understand what can i do from this position to make sure either this never happens again reduce the likelihood of it happening again or how can i pivot and change lanes so that i can keep going man dude that's so good because you know i started my other podcast as an apparel company in 2012 here we are almost 10 years in i almost sold the dang thing because i gave up on it in 2015 yeah. Right. Somebody called me up and was like, dude, I, I'll buy it for me. And I almost sold it to him. And I was like, no, I'm going to rebrand, launch the podcast 2017. Episode 222 just came out last weekend, man. And, you know, oh, now we're, uh, uh, you mean, humbly considered number one in my podcast out here in the Northwest. And then, you know, I went oh. and my Let's Max Out Challenge and that started this podcast. And here we are, man, just grinding away. I do two shows a week. And, you know, my end goal is just to continue to, to grow. That's a big word for me. Like in 2021, man, is grow. And I'm, man, that's my big focus. And it's grow my, I've, seen you know, it, it's I've, impact. Watched, I've watched you over the years. Like you, you've grown, you went through those phases of like struggle and like, I yeah. can tell. And then I saw you just like commit. I saw when you committed to it and just took off with it. And like the passion in your voice just comes through, you know, you can tell when a man is like defeated, you know, but what I love in those moments is to know that that defeat is temporary. You know, yes. it's allowing yourself to sit back and be like, man, this sucks. I hate this. I, it's not working. Yeah. But there's more to that sense. There's more to that sense. You don't have to put the period there, you know, like, uh, and I love seeing it because what comes from it is so nice. And obviously you can only truly appreciate it when you get on this side of the fence, unless you learn to appreciate all that life has to offer and not just the good. Yep. Man, thank you so much, dude. I appreciate that. What's the best place for folks to connect with you, follow you, and go go get your book? Um, so the book will be on Amazon. It'll be in booksellers like Barnes and Noble and all that around the country. Um, also, just my website or my which is chrisrudin.com. Instagram, I talk to everyone. So uh, at Chris Rudin, you guys can always reach out to me and talk about that. I did a live on Reddit, which like blew up and hit the front page. Talk reading through the book, um, nice. but my goal is to really give people the message regularly. So I'm releasing a limited series podcast called The Upper Hand, walking through each concept of the book. Because the book is nice, it's something you can read, but I want people to really understand and use these concepts. It's very digestible, it's very simple. You could literally just read the bold in the book and get the entire premise. So I don't want people to buy a, a thing and just not use it. I don't want people to just see pretty pictures. I'm trying to create multiple mediums. So whether it's a podcast, it's social media, the website, or just send me an email if you want to. I'm here to help talk, anything like that. So I'm here. I, I can definitely vouch for it, man. You're very active on Instagram. That's how you and I connected originally. And man, it just been it's been fun connecting with you over the last couple of years. Dude, Tris, uh, Chris, such an honor to have you back on the show, man. And I love what you got going on. Super excited for you and proud of you, man. And uh, man, just keep changing the world, brother. Same to you, man. I'm excited to see where we're going to be when we touch base again in a year or two. So thank you so much for watching the show today. I appreciate it. If you could please leave a rating and review on our Apple podcast. The link is down below. That helps us get our message out, get the show out, helps us get ranked out there on the Apple podcast. Also leave a comment below, man. I'd love to know what part of this show made the most impact on you. I respond to every comment on there and please share this video, whether you're watching on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, please share it out. We want to make sure that we impact as many people as we can with the guests that come on my show and highlight those guests and what they've got going on and they're changing the world. So thank you so much for the time. So appreciate it. Have an awesome day.